This is K.M. Wyland, and you're listening to the 215th episode of the Wordplay Podcast. Dun, da, da, da. I've officially completed my first draft of my steampunk novel, Storming. I clocked this baby in four months total. That is by far the fastest manuscript I've ever written, and wonder of wonders, I'm actually thrilled with how it turned out. I have a few minor tweaks and concerns to address, but all in all, I'm extremely happy with how the story turned out. The protagonist's voice was a ton of fun to write. The plot came together exactly as I planned, and I had a blast the whole way through. So now it's on to the editing and gulp the critiques. No video this week, but if you'd like to read my review of Joanna Penn's extremely helpful How to Market a Book, be sure to drop by my site at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. And now, I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast, entitled 10 Ways to Make Readers Loathe Your Antagonist. Your story's antagonist will make or break the book. What's that? What about the protagonist, you say? Well, yeah, he's kind of important too, but without a worthy opponent, he is not going to have much of anything to do except sit around and admire his hero hairdo. As important as it is to create lovable, relatable, fascinating protagonists, it's every bit as important to create antagonists who can stand in your character's way, prevent him from reaching his goals, and as a result, create conflict. Just as your good guy doesn't have to be a perfect person, there's also no rule that says your bad guy has to be heinous. In fact, Shades of Grey are almost always going to make him that much more interesting of a character. The only true qualifier for an antagonist is that he be an obstacle interfering with the protagonist's pursuit of his story goal. As such, the antagonist could be a nice little old lady, a sick child, or a virtuous social reformer. An antagonist doesn't even have to be a person. But with that said, it's also true that most readers enjoy an entirely loathable bad guy just as much as they do a lovable good guy. So today, let's consider a few of the traits that take your antagonist's shiver factor up a notch. Or 10. 1. The Cruel Antagonist Nasty bad guys who are nasty just because they can be are always going to be scary. We all fear pain, physical, mental, or emotional. So the thought of someone who not only doesn't mind inflicting pain, but even wants to do it, is downright despicable. For example, William Tavington in Roland Emmerich's The Patriot. 2. The Hypocritical Antagonist Hypocrisy is loathsome. It's one thing to be bad and be proud of it. It's another level of black to be bad and pretend you're really a saint. This facade can be something the antagonist honestly believes in or oppose for the sake of respectability. For example, William Dorrit in Charles Dickens's Little Dorrit. 3. The Relatable Antagonist Sometimes the scariest, most loathsome thing about a person is how much they remind us of ourselves. When readers are able to glimpse even the smallest bit of themselves in the motives or actions of an otherwise horrific person, it will make their reactions to him that much stronger. For example, Commodus in Ridley Scott's Gladiator. 4. The Arrogant Antagonist Bad guys who hold all the cards and know they hold all the cards and want to rub the protagonist's nose in that fact are just plain obnoxious bad enough that they stand in the protagonist's way, but do they really have to be so smug about it? Yes. Yes, they do. For example, President Snow in Suzanne Collins's The Hunger Games. 5. The Domineering Antagonist A close cousin to arrogance is dominance. When an antagonist holds power over the protagonist and abuses that power in a way the protagonist can't easily resist, he becomes not only obnoxious, but rightfully scary. Domineering antagonists come in all flavors, but often their most chilling manifestation is as a family member. For example, Rod Milligant in Andy Tennant's Ever After. 6. The Frightening Antagonist Some of the best antagonists are those whom we don't so much hate as fear. Serial killers, freaks, psychos, yep, they all have the potential to be visceral and powerful antagonists. As Carmine Falcone puts it in Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins, you always fear what you don't understand. For example, Darth Vader in George Lucas's Star Wars. 7. 
the imperturbable antagonist. Bad guys who are so bad that nothing ruffles their feathers may occasionally walk the line of being boring, but when their authors pull it off, these bad guys can be infuriatingly, terrifyingly inhuman. Even though they undoubtedly have their weaknesses, they seem unstoppable. For example, Frank in Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in the West. 8. The Skilled Antagonist Presumably, your hero is pretty awesome in his own right. As such, he's going to need an antagonist who can go toe-to-toe with him, someone who's maybe even a little better than he is. Readers respect skill, even when they don't like the guy who's wielding it. Skill is intriguing and, when used for evil, sobering. For example, Syndrome in Brad Bird's The Incredibles. 9. The Insane Antagonist Insanity means unpredictability. Unpredictable evil is always going to be hard to resist. It puts the protagonist at a disadvantage, both because it does the unexpected and because it goes places the protagonist, in his sanity, would never dream of. As such, it makes for one downright scary antagonist. For example, the Joker in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. 10. The Traitorous Antagonist What hurts worse than a friend or family member who suddenly turns against us? Hate is often just love flipped on its head. A loved character who goes rogue can often become one of the most hateable of all bad guys. For example, Nizam in Mike Newell's Prince of Persia. So, mix and match these traits until you come up with a bad guy that gives even you goosebumps. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, you can visit my website at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. And be sure to check back again next week.